Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. Today, we have a SAG Award winner, Grammy nominee, and she created the hashtag Unmutiny. Oh, and she won a 17th season of Dancing with the Stars. I am your host, Nisa, and you're now in a session with Amber Riley. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to see what's on the other. What inspired you this morning? Oh, work. Work inspires me every day. Work? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you mean by work? Work, my life's work. Music, mm. acting, producing, writing, just work. I am a my own machine. Is uh, faith a big part of this machine? Yeah, absolutely. I grew up Christian. My mom is a minister. Um, I grew up singing in church. Um, also classically trained on top of mm. that. Let them know. But <laughs> yeah, you can't just say, I grew up singing in church. No, no, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. People have that, oh, she must sing in church. Yes, but I, I, I'm also classically trained. Right. So. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. that also. Yeah. Um, but yeah, faith plays a, a major part in my life. I deal with anxiety and depression and a, along with learning how to, um, in a natural sense, deal with that in a spiritual sense has really kind of helped also. So faith is very important. How important is mental health to you? Oh man, so important. And the unfortunate thing about our society now is it's been like sensationalized to the point where people don't think that it's real. And mm -hmm. it's hard, it's a hard thing to explain to someone that doesn't experience it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I'm so open about it. I'm so open about talking to people because it, mental illness or having a mental health issues, anxiety, depression, whatever, it doesn't have a face. It does not. It doesn't uh, have a face. When somebody speaks about it and makes it more normalized, I think it's, mm. it's great. And somebody like you, which, you know, all the the awards, the winning of Dancing with the Stars, which I mean, that, that, was, that was one that really uh, is That's more amazing. Major anxiety leap for me. Yes. Because I said no first to doing really? that. Really? Oh, yes. Like, I don't want to, mm, mm They don't ever have no clothes on. Like, I was yeah. like, I'm not, I just wasn't confident in that way. But I love to dance, and I knew that I could dance. And I kind of wanted to show the world that, so I said no. And before they told them my answer, they were like, we're just going to let you sit on it for a couple of days. going to let you percolate on your answer. Mm -hmm. And I kind of went back and was like, okay, this is something that scares me, but is it a fear that it will make you grow? Or is it a fear that's a warning? And uh -huh. I was like, this is a fear that's gonna make me grow. And uh -huh. it did. And look at that. It and, really did. And you walked away with a trophy. I walked away with the trophy, unexpected. Un I did not think I was <laughs> going to win. So final week, <laughs> you're sitting there, you just did your final dance. Mm -hmm. Did you have a like an inkling that you were gonna win? Or did you was just like, <sighs> hey man, I, I made it this far. I, it is what it is. I just didn't put any expectations on it. Mm. I didn't, I was just like, I had so much fun. I got to do something and show the world that I can dance, which is something I always wanted to do because mm -hmm. dancing was a dream deferred for me, right? My mom and my parents were like, you act, you sing. Dancing, that's you're not gonna be a dancer. Right, right. So we're gonna put our focus on the things that we know you'll have a future in, right? Mm -hmm. So dancing just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't a thing. So being able to do that was enough. That was, that was. Winning was like, if you see, if you see the picture of the moment that I won. Oh, we're gonna I'm fly like, it up right now. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Amber and Derek. I did this competition because I didn't know if I can do it. And, and anything that scares me, I wanna do. So I wanna let women of all sizes out there know you can do whatever you put your mind to. It doesn't matter what size you are, what color you are. You can do whatever, 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 whatever you put your mind to. The moment that I won, it was genuine shock on my face. I'm like, what? Like, I was screaming and jumping. I just didn't think I, I didn't. I thought for sure, because Corbin Blue was the other 
the yeah, other the person yeah. that was in the contestant that was in the running and he's such an amazing dancer and he's trained and like yeah. you know the girls yeah. you know i mean okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> the girls were gonna vote for him and i'm just like yeah you know it was but fun did you not realize who you were at that time i, I mean i mean know who you are now but I like i mean i don't know Okay, so let's 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 talk. I to wake that. up with myself every day. I yeah. don't see myself like that at I, all. Hey, you know what? And that's why you have me here to remind you of who I'm talking to right Thank now. You. you know, we we talk about you growing up at church, you growing up singing and acting. You actually you auditioned for American Idol mm -hmm. and didn't make it. Mm -mm. Huh? I auditioned when I was 18, I okay. believe, and you know. The older that you get, your dream just starts to feel further and further away Talk sometimes. About it. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. right? I kind of grew up like the tale of two cities. Mm -hmm. My family, you know, we're pretty, we did pretty well for ourselves and then went to a slump and ended up struggling a lot. And so my mind was in a space of like, okay, I got to make it. Now it goes from being a passion to like, I got to make it. Like, this is what I have to do. Yeah, because not for you anymore. And then American Idol came around, and I was like, oh, my God. I really want to audition for this. I ended up auditioning for it and didn't get it. Like, didn't make it through the rounds mm. and, like, thought my world was shattered. Like, how am I going to? This is an impossible dream. Why would God give me this huge desire for something that feels like breathing to me? Right. Like, music feels like breathing to me. That feels like air. Yeah. When I'm down or I'm like upset or I need to clear my head, I sing. Like that's, it's breathing. That was like taking my air. Wow. When I didn't, you know, yeah. get that opportunity and I was but denied. <laughs> you were, I mean, you say taking that air, but then the, what, two years later? Yeah. Three years later? I think about like three or four years later. I booked Glee, and I always said in my interview, like, I ended up working for Fox anyway, and now they had a pain. Yeah, I, I was I was just about to say that. I was like, Fox was... <laughs> <laughs> now you have yeah, to pay Yeah, now you got to pay You could have got me for rent. Now, <laughs> hey, now cut the me price the price went up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they paid up. Yeah, they had to pay then. But, and I still got to sing, so right. that and was yeah, awesome. and, even, and even more, like, you got to sing and actually act and just move into that. I'm here to tell you that Glee is one of my all-time favorite shows. Oh. Like, period. Thank like, you. Oh, no matter what. Watching a show, these high school kids, and, like, I was, like, just out of high school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is this is real. Like, you <laughs> know, like, these these are situations that I actually knew people in, right? And and just the 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 rawness that you've seen on a, on a Fox show by kids, mm -hmm. or that was portraying kids. Um, talk about just that early, the, the early first season are just trying to do before you guys knew oh this is a hit yeah i think i think everyone pretty much knew like <sighs> a couple of days after filming mm. um interesting enough it took a really long time to shoot that pilot really because we shot everything on location um i think it took a good three weeks to a month where usually an episode only takes a week yeah a pilot wow it took a, a long time because there was no formula uh -huh. we we were the formula and yeah, you guys are doing song like so no other show was doing that nobody was doing musical theater on television and then shooting them basically a film yeah that's how we shot it was a learning curve like learning with how to read a call sheet understanding what your number means on a call mm -hmm. sheet you know freaking out because my name is on a trailer like I have this these really funny pictures of my first day in my trailer and <laughs> they're really embarrassing <laughs> are those findable too can we find those can we fly those up as well we'll find them we, we, we'll do that they're really embarrassing yeah. there's this one there's one shot where I have my camera and it's a camera like not oh, a the, camera the, the, phone <laughs> it's an actual camera yeah. and I'm like this like and I snap the picture <laughs> I was like that I could just picture this I was and, like so the camera excited like the, oh my god so excited and then meeting all these like 
cast these people that are green just like me. Yeah. None of them have had this type of opportunity. Not even our creator, Ryan Murphy. That was his first time being a showrunner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Brad Falchuk. That was his first time being an executive, like an not an executive producer, but being in that position, like on a show that was a phenomenon like that. And he was my age back then. That's nuts, what? right? Right? He was my age back then. So that just made me feel like I'm not doing enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just thinking about it, um, it was such an, a life changing experience that I'm blessed to have been a part of because it's taught me so many lessons in this business. Mm -hmm. To me, it seemed, and at this time, I just in my creative, like I was doing, I was heavy in music and like, like touring at the time, but like mm -hmm. looking at Glee, like, man, like this, I really want to do acting and look like the camaraderie that you guys have. It's like boot camp. And just knowing, knowing the, the mental hurdles and pressures of going through music, mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine like doubling that with acting and then being on Fox and then <laughs> being a, you know, the biggest like smash they've had in a long time. Being the only black person. Oh, we, I was going to talk identified about that. Yeah. on the show. Naya's black too, but was black too, but they identified her as Latinx. Right. So it was hard. I was the only black person on the set and it was very hard to sometimes relate to everyone culturally or or like explain to mm -hmm. the director or the writer why this is not appropriate to say or black people don't talk like this. Like it's <laughs> it it left me in like <laughs> Please speak about Jesus. It did leave me sometimes in very uncomfortable positions, but also heavily dealing with anxiety at that time and mm -hmm. that being exasperated and feeling like I couldn't say certain things mm -hmm. and um, having to push through my anxiety enough to stand up for myself, which I got better at as I've gotten older. Mm -hmm. um, it was hard. It was, it was tough. It was really tough. Like a lot of, lot of feeling by yourself or alone or, you know, taking time in your trailer. And it's, that's not even like a, a, like a diss on anyone else that was in the cast, but it, it had to do with just, we're different. Yeah. We communicate different. We grew up in different communities. Like, and so, so unless you are being deliberate about learning about another person, you probably aren't going to uh, connect on a certain level. And we weren't there to do that, we were there to work. So like, that's not really on them. There were good times and there were bad times. Like the great times were the moments where my community recognized what it was that I was doing on the show. Mm -hmm. And those amazing moments that I did get, which were few and far between, yes, that's shade. Um, <laughs> if, if you didn't know. That's shade. Yes. Which were few and far between and, um, those moments kept me moving forward. Mm -hmm. But there were moments on that show where I second guessed my talent, if I was good enough, you know, if people really respected me, if my community really respected me, or they, you know, thought I, I don't know, was like a sellout or something, I don't know, or a, a stereotype or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, those, 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 all those things went through my head, which I'm sure they do every single actor. Right. You know what I'm saying? How am I representing myself? How are they seeing me? But I wish that I got the opportunity to be the butt of a joke, but also be a hero at the some point, yeah. have a comeback and show what I actually can do. And I, I, you know, it did, it made me sad that Mercedes never got that, that moment. She didn't get that. Right. You know, she, she eventually kind of like toward the end kind of, but you know, it is what it is. You know, it's a, it was a launching pad for my career and I'm grateful to the people that I worked with, Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk, talk, still talk to them to this day. Um, and we've had conversations about that also. And I got to express what I felt about those moments and even got some like apologies and even got to, cause you know, they're good, they're good people. Right. They're, they are it good people. Like yeah, I mean, but it's, it's, it's also the business. It's the business. It's the business. And that's what um, people take it personally, but that's, it's, it's a business. A business. It's, a business. <laughs> it's a business. Your your duets and the best duets. Yeah. Period. Period. <laughs> With you and I. Yeah. <laughs>
I know, you know, recently we, we lost her. Mm -hmm. I know it was a tough loss for you. But just speak about you guys' relationship. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I won't speak too much because yeah, I'm still in the grieving process. But I love her. She's amazing. It was uh, an honor to work with her. One of the wittiest, funniest, like, no filter, but just clever. Like, so clever. Her, the way that her mind would work, I wish that the world got the opportunity to see all that she can do. Because they didn't. Mm -hmm. And as much as they got to see that was amazing, there was so much more beyond that surface. And I don't even know if she knew that. I don't even think that. I don't even know if she did. She I, didn't, I don't know. Life, yet she's just living her life, living her truth, living out loud. And she would even say that her greatest accomplishment was her son. We would sit um, on set and talk about like families and how we wanted kids and like me and her would laugh because we would always talk about how we would be soccer moms, like <laughs> being chased by paparazzi or something like at the height of our career, like taking our kids to the park and watching them play football or soccer or whatever right. because we just love children and wanted to be moms and have a nurturing just nature. Um, and she was just somebody that I respected, you know, there's... There are people that know their own strength and people that know the gifts that they have. And no intimidation comes with that. Respect comes with that. And there was never any moments of competition with her and I. There was never a moment of, you know, jealousy. It was just, damn, you're good. And I got to see you win. Like, because yeah. you're fucking amazing and you work hard like I work hard and that's that's dope to me I, you can't do anything but respect that yeah that I mean and that's rare mm -hmm. to come by as well especially you know I I hate that they they say you know female especially like females mm -hmm. and you know and being in a position you guys are in uh fighting for the spotlight mm -hmm. but when you find that love and that connection and just that pure just yeah just openness yeah that um, that was her and I that was that was her and I. Our that, friendship was great. That's amazing. That's really incredible. Um, you talked about on Glee having a voice. Mm -hmm. So you started a hashtag a mutiny. Mm -hmm. uh, please explain about what a mutiny is. A mutiny is a hashtag. Uh, sorry, I cut you off. No, nope, it's saying? fine. It's fine. <laughs> don't don't be sorry. Explain about what a mutiny is. A mutiny is a hashtag that I started um, amongst all the the things that I do do. Activism is one yes. um, with the focus on obviously my community, but also a focus on mental health um, and also a focus on what it is as actors and as uh, as an actor of color, a black actor, um, where our value as far as where our, where we are valued in this industry. Mm -hmm. There's this thing happening right now on Twitter. Um, Amber Riley from Glee started this thing called Hashtag Unmutiny. There's also something by Jared Hill called Hashtag Every Day. And then the Broadway actors mm -hmm. that are black and brown created Hashtag We See You. So there's all these people coming yep. together saying enough is enough. And I think that what people forget is that no one is asking for better or more. We're asking for equal. A lot of the things that I felt when I was on set was I didn't have a voice. My voice felt like it was suppressed, you know, or my job was in jeopardy for, you know, speaking out against things that made me uncomfortable, telling the truth or, you know, standing up for myself. And um, a lot of other actors felt the same way. And I was seeing so many stories that were similar to mine. And so I started Unmute Me as like a hub online for people to tell their stories and feel seen. And mm -hmm. I wanted it to kind of explode so that Hollywood can say, can see, hey, we're telling these stories and we're not gonna be silent anymore. This shit is not going, I'm sorry, I have a really bad mouth. Is it okay? I have a terrible fucking mouth. Great, okay. <laughs> so this shit, I'm, you know, I'm just like, this shit is not going to continue on. And the only way that that happens is if we're brave enough to tell the truth and expose it. Um, and it's not about ending people's careers. Like I don't, I don't have a, a vindictive bone in my body. I am so not a vindictive person, but also at the same time, don't fuck with me because I'm mm. not the one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And like as I've gotten older and going through therapy and 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 
um, learning who I am as a person, learning who I am as an artist, learning my value as an artist and understanding like, no, I am not lucky that you hired me. You're lucky that you hired me. Thank, thank you. And I am adding value to what it is that you do. That's why you're paying me. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to treat me with respect and accordingly when I'm on the set, just like you treat my counterparts. I'm not going to be treated less than because of the color of my skin, because you don't think that I bring as much value to your project. Right. Like, no, fuck that. That's not happening. This is not a time for people to be quiet. Absolutely. It's just not. It's not a time for people to be quiet. It's not a time to be comfortable. Get uncomfortable. Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. Now, hearing that name, and, and I, I say this, arrest the cops that killed, killed Breonna, Breonna Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Um, and I say that confidently, sadly, knowing that they're not going to be arrested mm -mm. by the time this airs. So I could say <laughs> it and it'll still be evergreen. To me, it really shines a light on, and I spoke about this in a pre in a, in a pre-existing episode, about how we see black men getting killed by police officers, um, unarmed black men being killed by police officers. Uh, we're not putting these police officers, but we also, you know, what is not, what's going under the radar is black women being killed by police officers. Mm -hmm. This is not a gender thing. This is across the board mm -hmm. um, that black men and women are dying at the hands of ones that are told, that's on the side of the car that say protect and serve. Mm -hmm but they're not even reporting crime, they're just killing us. So when you hear the name Breonna Taylor, like how does that make you feel? Because that you could look in a mirror and that could be you. As I feel like that could have been me as George Floyd, as my little brother or my brothers or my dad or any, any black male that I know that could go outside that door and not come back home. The Breonna Taylor story for me, that was the first time I really was like, that could have been my sister, that could have been my mom. That could have been my aunts, like anybody. That, that could have been anybody. Yeah, there's, there's so many layers to that. Actually, Brianna was the catalyst for me. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I didn't really, I've been in this bubble, really dealing with my own anxiety and depression, so I just couldn't. Yeah. I had to step away from social media and <sighs> heard about George Floyd, kind of backed away, gut-wrenched. I was scrolling down my timeline and I was like, somebody post a throwback Thursday of me? Cause I had that dress that she was wearing. It's a Calvin Klein dress from Macy's. Yeah. I know exactly the dress she had on. And I remember I wore it to one of our Glee premieres. And so I thought somebody had posted a throwback Thursday. Like, what is this? Thought it was me. Mm -hmm. Freaked me the fuck out when I read the caption. Yeah. Freaked me out. Couldn't imagine. Like, that legitimately could have been me. Legit. And again, the, the, the villainizing the victim, well, they were having drugs put to the house and, and they were trying to, and none of that, sh none of it was true. Yeah. And why are we, why do we have to prove their innocence to justify a killing that didn't need to happen. If that's the case, people need to go to jail. I'm not saying that people should pay for, you know, breaking the law, but the punishment needs to fit the crime. Yeah. And and you broke into someone's house. He was well, protecting his family. And were dressed in street clothes. In street clothes, you're not, you didn't, and no one announced themselves. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, there was Sandra Bland before that, a yes. Tatiana. Yeah. There was, you know, <laughs> Corin, you know, and again, because these women probably weren't palatable mm. black women, mm. right? Mm. You know, Sandra was giving attitude, smoking her cigarette in the car. Well, she had the right to fucking do. Yep. She did nothing wrong. Corin, you know, had, had a record. She still shouldn't have been killed. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? Breonna Taylor, it, you know, the story was she was asleep. She was killed in her sleep. So that's more palatable. So we're going to talk about that one. And I don't mean that in a negative, in a negative way. We right. should be talking about all of these, these women. Right. But I'm just talking about the psyche of America and how we 
justify what we're going to pay attention to. I'm going to attempt to break us out of this right now. <laughs> you got segue. enough where you can pick Yeah, and yeah, choose. crazy segue. But, <laughs> so I want to talk, I want to talk your music, but I want to do it in a game of Connect Four. Okay. All right, so we could, we could play it like this. Okay. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to be red. Oh, the guests don't get to choose the colors? Oh, no, no, no. I'm red. This That's is, orange. This is, this is red. It's orange. This is red. It may be because of the fuchsia lightning or something that's going on, but it's definitely red. This is orange. That is okay. All right. We're going to leave it up to the people that watch this to determine if it's red or orange, but are, are you, we need to talk about your I might be blindness? a little colorblind. Yeah, I was going to say, do we need, do we need to talk it's about It's okay. This? Can't really ever tell the difference between black and navy either, or pink and purple. You can't. Yeah, you okay. So... You may be okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's yellow. Is it? Yes. Wow. All right. I got it. <laughs> you got it. But I will let you go first. Okay. And um, but when I was walking in, you played a song called "Big Girl Energy." Yes. Please tell me how that song came about, and just what it represents. Um, what is Big Girl Energy? Big Girl Energy is taking care of business. Mm. And I remember that day going in the studio, and I just was like, I want to talk my shit. Okay. I just want to talk my shit today. Okay. So indulge me. Indulge. This is This is how I feel. It's about energy, and it's also um, about the physical, like physically being a big girl. Right, and right. how sometimes people think, you know, we don't have sex lives or we're not sexy or we don't have, you know, suitors or we fall in love just because, you know, somebody gave us a little bit of attention. Like, that's not it. That's not it. Are you working on an EP? Are you working on an album? My EP is done. The EP is done. It's can done, I get, done. Can I get Callan on it? It's album done, done. done. Album EP done. EP done. EP is done. Okay. So what's the, what's the EP entitled? Um, not sharing that yet. Okay. All right. So. There's still a lot of secrets. There's a lot of things happening with the rollout. Okay. And you're the first person that I've actually spoken Ooh. to about Ooh. Okay. with this music. Well, well I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, let's see. Cause I can't, I'm trying to ask things that's not really prying out the, uh, connect for uh, Damn it. Yes. That's what I was trying to, I was just trying to distract you. That's what I was trying to do. And I did it. And I won. You see it for everybody. Now, I want you to take that feeling and just discuss it in a booth. That's all. I want you what? To... <laughs> no, but I now, you know, since I could I could walk away happy. Um, but with that said, we're just going to leave this up here for display. Don't mm -hmm. don't take it down. Um, I want to get you in a booth. Okay. All right. So let's, let, let's go on. Let's go on and do that. Let's leave this here. It, no, let's leave it. Don't. It's fine. It's fine. We can just get you in a... We, uh, it's fine. That is, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got Ish on the beat, and we got Amber in the booth.
like, gee, that is just, at that note, was that even, how is it still standing, ladies and gentlemen? Look, can you just tell the people where to find you and where they could potentially pick up this amazing piece of work that you're about to put out? Well, the EP is going to be on all streaming services, of course. Um, I miss Amber. MS Amber P. Riley on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. You can find me there acting crazy and being myself. That, that hers full self, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Look, it was a pleasure, Miss Amber, to have you. Thank you. I am your host, Neeson, and you have now been in a session, and I'll catch you on the next one. This, this is flaming. session